So hello everyone. So this is our uh, first lecture, uh, the first recall video of our this course called uh, encouraging graph neural networks. So now I'm at uh, Easter Lansing. Uh, welcome to join this new class. Though uh, I may not introduce this kind of thing pretty well on the some basic knowledge on the graph neural network. And here, so I just started and see how it will be in about one, like more than two years time. So what this lecture will change us and what is it will change to me to my presentation ability. Okay, so anyway, welcome to uh, join this class, this first class. So the first class is about the uh, a soft introduction to the spectral graph theory. So I think it's also some basic on on the on, on this kind of like graph neural network. So we know that there are basically two views to view uh, to see a graph neural network. So the first perspective or first view is to in a spectral view, which seems like the graph is a kind of a sequence of frequency. And another view is the uh, spatial view, which is just like the graph stage. So this model, they just uh, connect the edge and do something like that. So uh, I'm Haito Mao, and I'm the first year PhD student from the Michigan State University. So let's start uh, this class, I think. So first, so this is the outline for this lesson, this lecture. So. Uh, the first thing is we want to you to know about that what can this kind of spectral graph theory solve. So basically, there are it is somehow different different from the uh, graph neural network. It's less powerful sometimes, but with some theoretical guarantees. Uh, I, I will not introduce all the details in this kind of what it can solve, but just. You get some basic idea that why I means what problem, so I can find some tools from the spectral graph theory. And then the second thing is about the key metrics in the spectral graph theory. What does that mean? It means that mm, so for graph, it is very, very general form to represent the data. But somehow not all of them have the good property. So the spectral graph only focus on some very special, uh, like the matrix. So this matrix are, are easy to under, analyze and have some good properties. So third topic is that, as we say that the, this key matrix has good properties. So the spectral graph series means about how to use the value or the vector of this key matrix with good property to solve some optimization problem to minimize something. And finally, to show how this kind of optimization procedure can work. So we have to, we have an application introduction. So it's a very famous uh, application called the graph drawing problem. And then we will show in the first thing is, let's go into these details. And the first thing is how can spectral graph theory solve? What can it solve? So the first thing is that The first thing is that um, we have four problems. So the first is the significant nodes, coherent. The second is coherent groups. The third is the interplay between network and dynamic pro process. And the fourth one is the multiple network. And the first one is like the significant nodes. The significant node is like, so for example, I have a social network. And for this kind of social network, so there are some, uh, knows or some famous people who can be very important. Also, it can be uh, other people uh, which may not be that important. So for example, so if you are a superstar in the Twitter, so if you just uh, post so something that others will, all, all, a lot of people will see that. So the, in that way, you are a hub node. So you can influence more people. So it's important to uh, identify so this kind of node. And uh, another thing is that how quick can we identify them for a network? You know, that's like the most social network is very big. It's, for example, 
more than uh, 10 billions or uh, more than 100 billions people that's in this kind of social network. So the speed or the computation resources also a key bottleneck for this kind of problem. And so we, we can also say that the network data is very complex and we need some kind of the centralized. So for example, the, the degree, the degree is the most uh, simple centralized. So in a later lecture, I think we will introduce something like the uh, eigenvalue uh, centrality and uh, are some other to merit that's how significant this node is. Also, the page rank is very famous one. So it's it's for the for Google. And so another thing is that uh, so we can identify the node. So another thing is that how can I identify like the coherent groups? So it's more like the first thing is. Mm, we want to identify a group of people which are very significant. So this this clustering, uh, this group, this community will have some good properties. So, mm, so the first thing is that how do we define this kind of the significant clustering? So for example, in the social network or in the citation network, they, are, they may have different defini definition of this kind of the significant clustering and the network structure is also very different. And also it has some um, maybe the um, time complexity problems. So how can, it's, it's hard to identify one and how can you identify a group? It's a more difficult problem. And the third thing is that since it, this is more like an unsupervised problem, so how can I evaluate the consistency of a clustering? Or how does, what does this identified communicate stand for? So that means, for example, if I have an unsupervised algorithm like the k-means, it can also generate a clustering. And I have some like the spectral clustering. So they have different uh, properties or something like that. So how to evaluate that? What is your goal? To, uh, to to know that the, the consistence of a clustering. And the fourth one is also similar with, uh, with the third one. So once you determine the consistence of a clustering, you just know that what desired property does, uh, th this should satisfy and you identify them. Okay, that's the second problem. And for the third problem, it's uh, more important for this kind of like the graph neural network. So that means the uh, interplay between network and the dynamic process. And nowadays, you know that uh, more like the physics people will uh, use this kind of dy dynamic process. So to introduce the time steps, you know, uh, like the graph neural network is highly correlated with this kind of uh, in spectral graph theory. What does that mean? It means that, so you know that, for example, in the social network, we are connected with each other. And for example, I'm always chat with the person A and the, my friend A will chat with his friend B. So in this, what does that mean? It means that the network will involve all the time. Uh, for example, in the graph neural network, we do that in what way is by the message passing. So the message passing is, you can view us as, call it as a one step the, in the dynamic process. So the first thing is that how should we model the interaction between the network nodes in a given dynamic process? So for example, the message passing can be a good way somehow, but it also has its drawbacks or the page rank is more, all have its drawback. So like the, the general page rank, you know that uh, it will, so it will jump, jump in this kind of dynamic procedure, but in the end it may has for example, if you found some node, it's only have in degree without all degree. So your, this dynamic process will just die into that point and the search result will be not so good. So that's has maybe some drawback of this kind of algorithm. And also it's very important. So in this dynamic process, the network will change. So that's give you a more challenge to see that this kind of the no significant or the group uh, coherence. So for example, we have some application for example. So uh, we know that there are some crimes uh, in, in the country, uh, in the world. So, uh, so the 
like the crime so for for these people they will like to hire around and they just use the network to go to uh, to hide to hide from the police so what does that mean is that if you know significant so to identify this person is not fast enough so once you identify okay here maybe it is a primer but he has just moved moved to somewhere else, so the time capacity is very important. So also, it's how fast you can identify. It's also a time complexity problem. So that's more like a, a static graph or a dynamic graph, which is more like a real world process. And the, and the fourth thing is like the multiple network. So we can see that uh, there are many networks. The networks can have different kind of structures, but the underlying phenomenon may be different, may be the same. And so like the graphon, so this is a mathematic uh, idea. So, but whatever, it's more like, um, there are some similarity between different kind of graphs. So once I have uh, maybe a very dense graph, it must have a very sparse graph, which can correspond to that. So, that will be some underlying properties that sh share the same. It may help us to uh, build faster graph neural network or make us give us more understanding of this kind of different kind of network. So that's the first part about what is the application of this kind of the spectral graph theory. And then we will come to the some mathematic part. Mm, the mathematic part is some. Um, Maybe you are very familiar with like the adjacent matrix and some the Laplace matrix. So I hope that you have some background in the uh, like uh, in the in, in some like the linear algorithm or something like that. I, I will not introduce them repeatedly. So I think you can view the MIT class open course. It has a very very good open course and you can look at that. So I will directly introduce the matrix in the spectral graph theory. So this is a very, very uh, easy definition. So I think most of, of you have looked at it. So we know that the graph is a G. G have the vertex and the edge. So for the vertex, it's like the node set. So uh, every node is contested into this set and E is the edge. So so what we want to say is that in the spectral graph theory, so I think as far as I can see, maybe I'm not an expert in that domain, but as far as I can see, so our theories, they will not introduce like the feature, the graph feature, the node feature into this. So we just um, talk about is a non-attribute graph. So I only have the graph structure for us to do some analysis. So that's the first thing. And for another thing is that, so since I say that the spectral graph theory is to find some good prop graph with good property to analyze. So the, so what is the basic for this good, uh, like this kind of understanding? So it must be an undirected graph and the graph must be simple. It may not have the loop or the multiple edges between. And also the vertex and the edge must be finished. So um, that's also very common in the real world, in real practice world. So if you have a directed graph, you can just change it into an undirected one to give you some analysis. And for the, like the not simple graph, like the knowledge graph, I think we still do not have so much uh, theory background into into this kind of domain. Okay, so that's what we are studying about. What kind of graph we are studying, and so that will came to what kind of matrix that we can formalize to mathematics to analyze this kind of graph. So the matrix it has like uh, two operations. So the two two ways to describe that. So some like matrix will be an operator. The operator you can see here, so M is uh, our matrix. The M will be a linear transformation uh, on this kind of the vector. So the vector will be the uh, will be the graph signal. Okay. So or some some features that you want to uh, process. 
And another one is the quadratic form. So this will output will be just a, a value. So this value will have some properties. So maybe like some energy function or Dirichlet energy function or something like that. And the first thing is the adjacency matrix. It's the most simple matrix in the uh, in the graph, but it's I can, you can see from that it's just a spreadsheet. It's, do not, it's neither a natural operator or a, a quadratic form. So what we de describe that I have a uh, n by n matrix, a uh, multiply n matrix. So this matrix, is, so for uh, the n is uh, the number of nodes. And if there is edge between node A and node B or this, uh, uh, it belongs to an edge, so it will be one. Uh, okay, so that's the most natural one. So another thing I want to point out is that do not think that the adjacent matrix is the mathematic be behind the graph neural network or graph convolution network. Actually, the why we always see this kind of adjacent matrix in the uh, graph neural network. So the the answer is that. The JSON matrix is uh, approximate to this kind of somehow some matrix that we will introduce later, like the Laplace matrix. So it's not a, a JSON matrix itself, but it's trying to approximate some matrix. Okay, so that's a key point here. And that comes to a very, very simple operator. So it's uh, this kind of diffusion operator. The diffusion operator is a Diagonal matrix. So uh, for the diagonal matrix, so for each uh, uh, each element on the diagonal, uh, just describe the degree of the, the the particular node. Okay, so that's that's quite simple. It's a diagonal matrix to describe the degree of the of each node. And then we will introduce the first very important matrix. It's called the random walk Markov matrix. So the random work Markov matrix is a linear operator. Um, so beyond the adjacent matrix, it has this kind of the degree matrix or the, we can say that this is a diffusion operator. So what does this, this mean? It means that if I have three neighborhoods, so the next step, in the next step, I, I will jump to another node, another neighborhood node. So the property will be one over three. So that's the understanding on this kind of metric. It's more like a kind of the normalize. So we normalize on the uh, on, on the out degree. So in that way, we will have uh, like like this 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 property. Uh, it's more like as I can say, it's like the distribution of how how much stuff uh, like it shows in in this textbook. And I want to say that it's it's simply like a random walk, okay? So that will help you to understand this kind of uh, matrix, the random walk Markov matrix. And so, as I say here, we can also see that um, we give a more formulation. So the P is a one hot vector. So it shows that which node you are at first. It's like the random walk. I will random select a node as a start node. And then I will, my neighborhood, I will change to my neighborhood based on my out degree. Okay. So there is another, so there are another very important one. It's like the lazy random walk. So the lazy random walk, so how do I understand that in the, uh, it's more like this kind of, I will stay in this node in uh, the half chance. And for another half chance, so I will move to my neighborhood. So that's somehow you can think it as, in the graph neural network, how can we uh, see this idea is like if I have the residual connection, so that means I will stay in my node. So that is called a, a lazy random walk. Okay, so let's give, give you a more chance to stay as your node and do not move to elsewhere. And it, it may have different properties with this kind of single uh, random walk Markov matrix. And and then I say that we just normalize on the out degree. So there can also be a matrix. Another mark of random work matrix is is on the 
it's normalized on the in degree. So so we can say it's just this is multiplied on the right and this is multiplied on the left. And then so in this kind of situation, so the 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 behavior of this kind of Markov or this operator will change. So we will see uh, this as a very concrete example. So we have this M, so this M is uh, uh, the adjacent matrix. So I have the adjacent matrix and I have the degree matrix. So we can see that the the uh, uh, the WG P and the WG transpose P will be different. So different is that, um, so different is like, uh, so for the in degree, I will do the normalization and for the out degree, I will do the normalization. So it's it's a somehow like a transpose operator, okay. So that's not so important, but here I want to give some idea on this kind of how to build so there are some benefits from this kind of the uh multi multiply the diffusion operator on the left and on the right. So that's some intuition on, on the last step that we will build some symmetric, which will both consider the in, in degree and out degree. So then after we introduce an op very important op operator, so next I will introduce some the most natural and most frequent use. Uh, a quadratic form, which is a Laplacian matrix. So for the Laplacian matrix, so it's more somehow like a function. This function is two, you can see here, if this two nodes are connected, uh, node A and node B, so A and B will belong to the X set. Then what, what I would do is to, this is uh, like the graph signal, or you can see the feature of A, and this is the feature of B. Okay, so what I'm doing is to uh, to measure the distance, the L2 distance between the no this signal A and the signal B. And uh, uh, WAB stands for the weight on this, this the strength for this kind of, uh, this edge. So that's not so important. So what does that mean is that it tries to measure how smooth this graph is. So, if the node A and node B, they are connected, so uh, we will check if their distance is close enough. If it's very close, so that means this quadratic form will be very small and your graph is very smooth. Okay, so that's a key point here. So uh, then I will give you a concrete example. So we have this graph. So what does this graph mean is that I have a node like the node A, and this is node B, node three, uh, no, uh, node B, node C, and I have the node A connected with node B, and I have a node A connected with node C. Okay, so that's just true edge. So in that way, I will measure the distance between the node A and node B, and node A and node node C. So that's a very concrete example of how this kind of Laplace matrix uh, operate on operator on this kind of um, very simple graph. So another way is like the incidence matrix. So the incidence matrix is derived from the um, from from the Laplace matrix. It's a um, matrix factorization of the of the Laplace matrix. So what I want to say is that um, here the in the uh, incidence matrix. So we can see here. So for each row each row is it's an edge so here we can see here this is if the node a is the start of the start point or end point or the, because it's undirected so the start point start node or the end node is not so important so for start nodes i will give it assign the value to one and for the uh for the end node i will give you the minus one so this will be a uh, very large and sparse matrix. And the relationship is that the the indexing matrix, the IJ, the tr I trust the transpose IJ uh, multiply the IJ, it will result in the corresponding Laplace uh, uh, matrix of the graph. So, so it is very uh, easy to prove that 
they have they share some similarity. And I will go deeper into what this kind of thing will stand for. And you can know that the since it's the Laplacian matrix is quadratic form, it's more like the Hessian matrix. Or uh, so what does it stand for? And the indented in incident matrix, it is correlated with the Jacobian matrix or, or something like that. So uh, I just want to give you this kind of intuition. Okay. So next I will introduce the two very also important. So as I can I say that the for the uh like 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 the Markov matrix, random work Markov matrix, I do some kind of like the uh, normalization. So for the Laplacian matrix, I will do the similar um, similar operator, I think. So to give you some normalize. So why I want to normalize? It is very easy. I will give you an example. It's like so like in the graph neural network, you are always would like to keep all the um all, all, all the all the nodes embedding it will share the similar norm or it's very difficult to do the optimizations so for example if you have an a node a node feature which the norm is the larger of norm is more than 100 and another node is like the uh 0 0.0.0.01 uh, so that's that is terrible. That can, cannot be optimized very easily. So, so the symmetric is very important. If you do not do the symmetric, so if there is a half node, you see about that. The half node maybe it has like more than one thousand connections, and you need you need to calculate the smooth the L two distance on like one hundred, uh, about this node. So this node will be dominate on this kind of uh, graph smoothness. So we need to have this kind of symmetric. And the symmetric is in the two ways. The first way is the symmetric way. It's easy to see. And another way is the random walk way. But we, we often use the sym symmetric way in the, in, the, in the graph neural network. I will introduce this in, uh, uh, later. And first we will say what is a good property of this kind of random walk Laplacian matrix. So we can see that uh, in this last form, we can say it's also shows a correlation with a Markov random walk Markov matrix. So the difference is that the random walk Markov matrix, uh, the eigenvalue, the eigenvalue of the random walk Laplacian matrix is just one minus the corresponding eigenvalue in the random walk Markov matrix. So, so what does that mean? So what does that mean? It's uh. So uh, that means that mm, so the if the we can say that the higher the larger eigenvalue represents to the high frequency, and the small eigenvalue corresponds to the low frequency. So mm, that means that I will exchange the importance of the uh, of the high frequency and the and the low frequency. I will give you a, a more weight, or I will look more on the low frequency, which is like somehow like more smooth. Okay. As a lab, as a normalized Laplacian matrix, it it also have the similar properties with uh, uh, the Laplacian matrix. But we can see here that uh, each node is uh, normalized by its, its self degree. So in that way, uh, the it is normalized. Okay, so for uh, the super node will the the half node will have a very very large this kind of the degree matrix. So make it less important. Okay. So the next thing is that I will give you some intuitive understanding on this kind of the. Uh, Laplacian matrix. So what what does that mean? That so imagine imagine what does the uh, Laplacian matrix stand for? It stands for that. Imagine that you are in a mountain. So there are a group of people which are in a mountain. Okay. So let's say we have n people 
in the month is correspond to the n nodes in your graph. So we want what we want to know. What we want to know is the height. So where we are on the on this mountain. So we will never know that. Um, we 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 cannot know that uh, this before, but we can know the like the relevance distance between each other. So there may be some paths. Okay, I can go from like I'm here, and you are on on another position on the top of the mountain, and I will have a path. The path is like the graph edge to go to the another position. Okay, so so that's a very intuitive. Uh, understanding and then so see if we have this kind of mountain okay so for this mountain i have eight persons and i have passed from the uh, the person a to person uh person person one to person two and person two to person three so what is difference between these two graph is that we do not have the uh, the pass from the person four to person Person five. So what we can do in this mountain to know our the height of us is that is that I can move. I can move from the person one to the person two. Okay, so maybe we will go down the mountain and go up the mountain to the person two. So that in that way, I'm aware of the relevance height between us. So I will go up and go down or something like that. Okay, so that's, uh, okay, well, we see here the degree of freedom. The degree of the freedom is the same as the number of the components of the graph, which means, so this, for this graph, it only have one connected component. And for this graph, I have like a two uh, connected component. And then, uh, I will have this kind of formulation. So the M here, we can say, M is the record of the relative head. And the H is the head that we want. Okay, so H is unknown, which is what we want to have. And M can be measured by this kind of, the uh, we walk from the person A to the person B. Okay, so this is an index, uh, incident matrix which help us to go from the person A to first B. And similarly, this is for the second graph. The difference is that uh, the second graph do not have the edge from the node four to node five. Okay. And what we want to say is we want to know that the height, um, or know where we are on this mountain. So we just, this is a linear system. So we just directly solve it as a linear regression. So the last term we want to find is like uh, uh, use the square arrow function. So that's a totally, a, we can have some mathematic tools like the uh, linear regression to solve this problem. I, I will not introduce the details here, but we can see that the optimal solution is, is shown in this way. Or you can also say it's more like this kind of uh, uh, equation. And and then we will know that that we have the incident matrix here, and then we will know that. So uh, we can see a very natural form, which is uh, transpose of the incidence matrix of G and the incident matrix G. Okay, so in that form, we we have this kind of quadratic form of the Laplacian matrix. So the Laplacian matrix on the head. It can help us to measure, okay, the the distance between each other, and then we can somehow give us some inter information on what height we are on the mountain. So, in that way, uh, I, I will say that. So we will not know that where we are on the mountain, but what does that mean is that you see here the the node the node A is the lowest point. So Maybe we can see here is a zero, and then we can give each each point a value. If I have maybe the uh, node eight will have the one hundred uh, meters high, and this will just 
push out together to push push up together to a more hate. So I will know the actually the relationship between this kind of hate. It will go up and go down together. But for this kind of the degree of freedom of two is different. So I can just move this kind of connected component. So for each connected, I can know the relative position between this kind of uh, only on this kind of a uh, connect connected component. But I will never know the relationship between the node four and node five. And then so maybe I will just uh, climb up or push up one hundred. Uh, meters higher on this hat and this will may not change okay so let's give you maybe it can give you some understanding of this kind of um, Laplace matrix is to measure the hit or the relevant hit of, of of this kind of graph so that may help us to solve a lot of problem and then we came to the third part the third part is about the most important thing is called the spectral graph theory. And our most important thing is the eigenvalue. So I repeat many times that for the spectral graph theory, it tries to talk about um, some, some matrix with very good properties. So what is a good property? So the spectral theory means that we all started on the real and uh, n by n this means uh, a square matrix, a square, a real value, and a symmetric matrix. So if the the matrix is not, do not have this three condition. So the the eigenvector may not be orthogonal, and the eigenvalue may not always be the real value. Okay, it's, it may be a, a a a complex value. So that makes you very hard to analyze this kind of properties. Okay. So that's what I mentioned before. For the lap, normalized Laplace matrix, we always want to start it is the symmetric one. So the symmetric one is, is satisfy this kind of spectral theory. So the eigenvalue of this kind of uh of the symmet symmetric matrix, so it will be uh, be the solution in many like the spectral graph theory problem. Okay, so for the eigenvalue, what I want to say is that so the eigenvalue it will denote to the lambda and to the to the mu sometime. So for lambda, it's always described as uh, described the Laplace matrix. Okay, so the lambda is from the smallest one, like the lambda. Lambda one is the most, or lambda zero is the most smallest one. Okay, and for the mu, it is totally different ways from the largest to the smallest. So you can, um, anyway, I will introduce this kind of thing later. And so the, why the eigenvalue is a general solution to this kind of thing. So I brought this from the, uh, the, 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 the spectral graph theory class from Yale. You can see here. So here is uh, is the logo of a yield, and then you just use the eigenvalue. Uh, the eigenvector corresponds to the second largest and the third largest eigen uh, eigenvalues on the Laplace matrix. Then you can see a very good and uh, clustering structure, and it's somehow they they would like to say. Okay, this is very beautiful graph drawing. Uh, but anyway, I do not mention and do, do not mind that. So another thing to understand this kind of the spectral graph theory is that so the spectral graph theory is a very important coordinate in the in our uh, in the spectral graph or it's kind of similar with with the Fourier transform or the frequency domain and the time domain. So we can see the, um, let me just introduce this. It's more like that uh, for it, uh, for this kind of eigenvalue and eigenvector. So it's more like the sine and cosine function in the Fourier transform. 
the, something like that, the, the, the frequency domain. So the frequency domain, the sine and the cosine function, it will preserve the distance, or we can say the pre, pre, preserve the similarity between a pair of nodes. But it depends on some kind of the frequency. So like in the, um, so like in the, so that means uh, the eigenvector corresponds to an eigenvalue. So some node may be similar, but some nodes may be different from each other. So just give an eigenvalue the corresponding eigenvector. So we need multiple eigenvalues to give you the motive view to measure how these two nodes connected with each other. So for example, if in the first view, in the first eigenvalue, the eigenvector of the node one and node two is similar. That does not mean so similar if all the other eigenvectors, they are distant from each other, okay. So that's a way for you to understand this kind of the frequency domain and the time domain or something like that. And in the later, I will show you that's why the uh, eigenvector is the best coordinate. And we can see this is a line graph. The line graph means that I only have the uh, edge from node A to node, node, node 1, from node 2, node 2, node 2 to node 3, node 3 to node 4. And we can see the eigenvector of correspond to different eigenvalue. So for the eigenvalue 2, you can see here, this is very smooth. So it means that the frequency is very, it's very, it's very small. It will change smoothly. Okay. And for the other nodes, for, for the other uh, eigenvectors, so the frequency will change somehow. Okay. So that will be a very intuitive example to show that this is quite similar with, we say, the sine and the cosine function. Okay. So then I will give you, um, um, so we understand that the eigenvalue will correspond to this kind of uh, uh, to this kind of the frequency domain or preserve the similarity between two nodes, then we are very interested in the eigenvalue of the matrix. So this, as I always say before, is a natural optimization problem, the solution for natural optimization problem. So I will give you the current Fisher theory. So uh, this is very, the most important one in the spectrograph theory, I think. So, mm, so what I want to say is that I have a mm, I mean the symmetric matrix. So the M here is not the adjacent matrix. And what I want to say is this kind of the formulation. So uh, it's a max mean play problem. So in the in the mean, okay, I will have uh, this kind of space. S is a space, so the 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 vector x, or we can say the graph signal, must be belong to this kind of the subspace, and x cannot be zero because when x becomes zero, th this is uh, this is not allowed. It will become to the infinite, and the outer will be the max problem. The max problem will define the what this kind of the s space is. So the constraint on s is that it has to be k dimension. So the power will be limited somehow. And the, the, the dual problem, uh, I can say that. So it's a mean max problem. So in this mean max problem, you can see that it also has the subspace T, but since the mean max changes, this also change, the dimension also change to N minus K plus one. Okay, so I will introduce this theory. So the step by step, so we first we will we will tell you how to simplify or how to define this kind of x transpose multiply x, and then I will introduce how to know the x transpose m m multiply m and multiply x, and then I will introduce this as a whole. Finally, I will have this kind of magnitude problem. Okay, so. Repeat, we will give you this kind of the spectral theory. So the, the spectral theory 
you know that? What is good property? The good property is this. Th this factor is a orthogonal. A orthogonal means that the, each factor it have uh, an an uh, uh, L2 norm, uh, uh, L2 norm of one, and for uh, and when you have the uh, like the how to say that uh, mu mu I don't know how to say this uh, phi phi okay phi phi one and phi two if you multiply the vector phi one and the multiple uh, phi two you use the dot product and and then the result will be be zero so that means a signal so what so this is give you a basis to analyze the vector okay so then i will sh show you the full step here so the first step i can express okay you can see here it's an x in this in, in this space in this uh in, in this uh, eigenvector space so I can mapping it into uh into like this basis. Uh, okay, so this vector will be uh mapping into this basis. So for each vector, each eigenvector, I will have a const I have a value. So this value means that how this uh this vector, this vector x, uh the lot of vector x on this kind of direction. Okay, so this is a ma the mapping value. So we can see here, this is a, we can say that this is a, a, another representation of the vector X in this uh, eigenvector spaces. And then, and then this is a very, very um, easy way to show you that uh, if we have this representation of x and we have the property that's uh, uh, we only will have this kind of the uh, eigenvector eigenvector only have the normal uh, can have the dot product result with the eigenvector itself for other eigenvector it will result into zero so using this very good properties so we can see here the x transpose x multiply x will just be this kind of the square result of the constants. Okay, so that's quite easy. I will, I will not repeat. So we have this kind of properties. I will not do this this kind of the, the computation uh, steps. And then uh, we will have another thing is that we will consider the x transpose x multiply m and uh, multiply x. So in that way, what that means uh, it's also very similar, so uh, we can see the difference here. So here we only have the uh, C CI, uh, 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 the square of the CI, okay, the square of CI. And uh, here we have a mu. So where does the mu come from? The mu come from that's on the, like the, also we know that if we have this kind of the, the N, okay, the M is a matrix. Multiply the corresponding uh, eigenvector, so it will result in the corresponding eigenvalue and the corresponding eigen uh, vector. Okay, so that means, like in this way, I will write it down. It means that I have an phi i equal to mu i. Uh, multiply the phi. Okay, so that is very simple. So I just okay. Oh, we can see it here. This it do not use lambda. We can use a mu here, and then I put it into this one, and then I will finally get the result here. Okay, so I only have a mu here. So that's a key point here. And then I finally I will have this kind. I will represent. Okay, I will represent this one and this one in in the basis of the eigenvector. So then I will try to solve this kind of problem. So how can I solve this problem? The first thing is that 
uh, we first like put the mu mu i the eigenvector in a non increase way. So that means the uh, uh, lambda lambda one uh, mu one is the largest eigenvalue, and then we can see from that. Uh, here, here we know that this s only have the dimension of k. So I can only use this kind of k dimension, okay, k dimension eigenvector, to 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 represent this uh this uh k k dimension eigenvector to describe uh the the vector x in this domain, okay. So that's quite simple, and then we can also represent this kind of x, okay. So so it's not on the the basis will change. It will the i uh, will not be the entire domain. Okay, it's from i to k, and in, in that way, we can see that. So as I said before, the the lambda k is the smallest eigenvector. Okay, so I will change all the like the uh, lambda one, lambda two, lambda uh, no mu one, mu two, mu three into the mu k. So uh, that will be much smaller. So so this uh, in equation will will stand for this lambda k. So first, we know that from one side, from one side, we know that this problem, if you are you are in the s domain, you are in this kind of s domain, you must larger than the uh, smallest eigenvalue, uh, the, not the smallest value, the, the uh, the k highest value, okay, I see, the k highest value. So let's give you the first point. So so here you can say, as we, we prove from this point, the next point is more like a sandwiches uh, theory. Okay, how we prove that? It actually came from the another subspace. So here we have the subspace of k, and then we have the subspace of the n minus k plus one. Okay, so this, those two subspaces definitely, definitely, we have a k subspace, and we have an n minus k plus one space. So these two spaces much have the overlap between each other because the dimension of so the whole subspace is n dimension, as n minus k, uh, n minus k plus one minus k will be n plus one. So it definitely will have some overlap, okay? So then for the max problem, the proof is also very, it's also very similar. Since we have only this subspace, so we ha we can have the similar thing. So this is a minimal way and this is a max way. For the max way, so it will be no larger, okay? It will be the n minus k, uh, n minus k plus one smallest value. So that's also corresponds to the mu k, okay? So in that way, those two things must have this kind of the overlap. So the so for this minimized problem, okay, so the overlap vector into this space must be larger or or equal to this uh this x vector in a more larger space okay so that will help us to prove that it's more like a sandwiches uh to approximate from the uh, minimized way and the maximized way so we have the overlap and the overlap will result into our final results which is uh vector that we want is the uh, mu k, okay? So that is um, our understanding. So that means this uh, max mean uh, problem, the, the final results will be the eigenvector somehow. Oh, and that depends on the how much uh, vector, how much the rank of the uh, rep of the metric space that you give it to the uh, to 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 our solution space. So that's the most basic uh, problem or most basic theory in the spectrograph theory. So then 
I will show you another very interesting thing is the graph drawing problem. And in this kind of graph drawing problem, so I will show you how to maybe utilize this kind of good properties to find the eigenvalue that we want. Okay, that's the first thing. And another thing I want to tell you again is that why this kind of eigenvalue and eigenvector is the natural solution of many optimization problem. Here we will give you a um, very uh, intuitive. So here on the graph drawing problem, we will have a graph. So the graph may have some weight, okay? So what we want, what we want is a connected graph, okay? So, uh, so the connected graph will should should be smooth, or the connected components should have the similar value. Okay, so that's what we want. We want to minimize this problem. We want to like the we want to have a very smooth graph signal. So that's called the graph color coloring. Coloring means that for each. So, for example. So why am I drawing a picture? Okay, why am I drawing a picture? So when you just point on, uh, when you just want to point on 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 the on your picture, so it will just differential or just spread to the, uh, to the to the to the area just uh, uh very near to him. So let's give you some like we can call it the smoothness. And it may have some very tricky solution. So the first tricky solution is that so if all the all the graph signal are uh, the 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 components in the, this x vector, all of the vector uh, all of the value will be zero. Okay, so that's totally smooth. But you can say that you are drawing on a white paper. So the white paper is the white is very smooth, but it gives you nothing. Okay. So that's a very bad solution. So we are constrained that the no normalize the L two normalize of the a norm of the x vector uh, should be one. And another thing is that. So I want to know some knowledge about this graph, but however, you just paint this graph only with a single color. So that will give you no more knowledge. It's, it's similar with the white white one. Okay, so I have no know nothing about the structure of this graph, know nothing about how smooth this graph is. So that means uh, each node will have the same value, all the nodes will have the same value. So that will be a tricky solution. Okay, so that's also, so this tricky solution, it also corresponds to the over smooth problem in the graph neural network. And then, the third thing is that for the graph coloring, we will have like the two dimension, okay? So the two dimension must not be the same. If it has to be the same, okay? It will not result in some, we will see nothing. We will see a line, but not a graph, I think. Okay, so yeah, that way we will have this final problem. The final problem is to minimize this kind of, uh, uh, minimize this kind of, we can say it's as an energy function. So what we want to say is that the first is that x and y, they cannot be a, be the zero vector. So that means we have the norm equal to y. And the second thing is that I will not see the same color, okay? So I will have like this, sorry for that. Uh, okay, and I will have this will be will be zero. It should be a signal to the to the uh, all one vector. And the third thing is that I want to have more information. So x and y. So these two coordinates, the two dimension. Okay, so. They should also be different, so that it should be a signal between each other. And so we know what we are optimized for. So let me check how to prove that. So we have the following two sub steps. 
So the first sub step is that, so if and only if the graph is connected, there's only one eigenvector of its Laplacian equal to zero. So what that, that means is that if you have only one connected component in the graph, in this kind of graph, so the Laplacian matrix, okay, the, the eigenvector, only the lambda zero, or we can say is lambda one, will be equal to zero. And the eigenvalue corresponded, okay, will be all of, all the thing will be the same value. So that means you have the one over the skirt, uh, okay, square skirt, uh, and so that will pro provide you no information. So, so as we can see, what we want to say here is that if if we have so. What we know first is that all the eigenvector, okay, all the eigenvector is satisfied as the norm of the eigenvector is one. And another thing is that all the other eigenvector is orthogonal to the eigenvector, uh, the, uh, this eigenvector zero, okay? So this is a trivial solution that we mentioned then. So all the eigenvector apart from this one, like the, it has a property that this will be zero, okay? So that's the first property. So I will give you a very quick overview on this property. I will not go so much details into here. So okay, here we will change our uh, like uh, our formulation on the uh, eigenvector. So for the Laplacian matrix, the eigenvector will be the lambda. So the lambda is from the smallest one to the uh, largest one. And then what does that mean is that, so first here we want to say, uh, for the Laplacian matrix, it must, it must have some eigenvector, okay? So this eigenvector will make the whole graph very smooth. So for the first thing is that if all the nodes have the same value, so it's totally smooth, whether it's a fully connected graph or you, this graph do not have any edge, so it's also very smooth because there is no distance between each node. So to solve this problem, we can see below, that's, it must have the lambda become zero. So can we find any other node or all the, any other uh, eigenvector, okay? to satisfy other than the all one vector to satisfy the solution. So, or we can say to make the entire graph very, very smooth. So that could not be possible if you only have one connected component. So once you change, okay, once you change, so uh, it is orthogonal to the all one vector. So the only way is that you have this kind of two eigenvector, uh, two, uh, no, sorry two connected components. So in this kind of like a two connected components, so you can have a separate one vector, okay? So this is a, a vector for the, uh, for, for this is a vector for the, this graph, this eigenvector. And this is, this one is for this subgraph, this connected component. So then you can have two orthogonal eigenvectors that correspond to the zero eigenvalue. So that will make you the graph entire smooth. I will not prove it in details here, but it's very easy to understand. So the only way to make your graph entirely smooth is all the values, all, 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 the, all the nodes in a connected component, you should have the same value, okay? So if you have only one connected component, so you only have one choice. But if you have two, okay, you will have, you 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 will have two that make the entire graph smooth. Okay, so that's the key point here. So the second thing is that I want to prove what thing is. So we can say that the first thing is we want to show you that uh, the the eigenvector corresponds to the to to the uh, the eigenvector. Uh, uh, correspond eigenvector one uh, corresponds to the uh, eigenvalue one will have the 
the good reason will, will satisfy the property, okay, the constraint that we want. But there is an, another thing that we haven't proved. We haven't proved is that why this kind of eigenvector is the, the optimal or the minimized solution for this kind of problem. So that's what's next that I want to prove to you. Here, so we think about this problem is, is that I have um, k, eigen, k vectors, okay? So those eigenvectors, so they only need to satisfy one thing, is they all orthogonal to one, to the one vector. So that means that's, that's your third space, okay? So what I want to say is that, mm, so in this graph coloring problem, you only have two dimensions, okay? So in this kind of two dimensions, okay, will be true. So that means whether you just, uh, the third space is just to select the value of uh, actually this and then what will you find? And, and also the important thing is, I want the, also this X1, I, I X2 will be also the orthogonal matrix. So the, in this third space, the optimized solution will be the eigenvector of the, uh, eigenvector of corresponds to the eigenvalue two and the eigenvalue value three, okay? So then I will try to prove this kind of thing. So why here? Right here we say here this is start from two to k minus or k plus one. Is that uh the uh the lambda one is just equal to zero as I said before. And also another constraint is that we only talk about we only talk about the the graph with one connected component. So if the graph with the two connected components, like we can see in the mountain view, the mountain view, I will not know that's how these two groups co correlated with each other. So this kind of graph drawing problem will just uh, throw on the each connected component, okay? So each connected con component will be a single graph. And then I will show how to pose this kind of thing here. So. The first thing is that, okay, we have this kind of eigenvector. So the lambda zero, the lambda one is zero and lambda two. So we only consider about the, the situation that we have the one connected component. So this, this should not be here. This should not be here. So it must be, the lambda two must be non-zero, okay? So, uh, let me check on the, this kind of thing. So here we have, okay, so we have a group of this kind of uh, eigen, eigenvector, or no eigenvector, this kind of orthogonal, orthogonal vector, which is in our search space, okay? So we can just uh, think of this kind of a subgroup of the orthogonal vector. We can give you the, the entire orthogonal basis. So as we can see from here, okay? So what we want to say is that in the spectral graph theory, this kind of a orthogonal matrix is very important. So you can just, like we said in the before, if I have an arbitrary uh, vector in this space and I have a group of the eigenvalue, this will formalize the basis. So all the vector can be represented in this way, okay? So it can represent, it have a value on, every direction of the eigenvector. So that's the first thing. Okay, that's the first thing. And then um, we will sh show that, so this equation, this equation is is correct. So they are just two, like the two orthogonal bases. So the one they do this kind of the, uh, uh, multiplication and the normal normalization of the norm of each vector is one. Okay, so when you just map to any kind of the orthogonal basis, so you are results in in one. So I don't think that 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 do not need any proof because, like like I say, if you have this kind of norm will become one, and then if you change, you just multiply. Here is a uh, like the another. Uh, orthogonal basis, so it will it will be equal to just have this uh, orthogonal space to this x two, okay? So this is one, and this is also one. 
So that's clear. So the, the norm, the, the norm of a vector is is independent of the eigenvector space that you, the, 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 the orthogonal space that you choose. And then we will try to prove this kind of thing. So we can see here, here we work on each orthogonal, orthogonal vector, okay? On our, on our uh, eigenvector space. So here, why is just from two? The reason is just the same. For the the, the, the one, it has no meanings. And the, the lambda, lambda, lambda one is just zero. So it's just, uh, we just uh, uh, throw out the zero term, okay? So here, we just remind in our last theory, we have this kind of result. It's just to map um, the x vector into this kind of uh, so, uh, in, in our eigen eigenvector space, so that will that will result in uh, okay. We can see this result. So I think it's very. I think it's clear somehow. So we can say here the C is a lambda i and x, and the. Uh, and the lambda i is a, like the important on 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 a, 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 is an angle vector, okay? So it's derived from this L. And now we what we can do, what we can do is that since we have this formulation that all of the thing is equal to one, so uh we will know that the thing is that's a lambda k plus one is on this uh, equation will equal to the lambda k plus one, okay? So what I mean in that way is that I can minus this term to this one, okay? And then I will have, have a, a very interesting, I will just throw a uh, pull out this lambda k minus uh, plus one out and the another one, is this term. So in this term, so it is larger, larger. So we know that the lambda, lambda k plus one is, is larger than those lambda, uh, than those smaller than them like, like the lambda k. So this one, here from the lambda two to lambda k plus one, it will be, so this term is uh, greater equal than zero. And this term is less equal than zero, okay? So uh, in this term, mm, I will have this kind of uh, solution. So that's very normal, okay? So then, then I will, what I will prove next is that so uh, actually we will have each vector I can have this kind of the result. Okay, so that means each vector x in this orthogonal matrix in this orthogonal no the orthogonal vectors. Okay, so for each x x one to x two, I can have this kind of uh, inequality. And then finally, I will, I will sum up them. So the sum up solution will be the same, okay? So I will not derive the details here. And the thing is that for this sum, for this sum k, okay? The k is for the, for this kind of, the index of the, uh, x vector in, but not the eigen vectors, this orthogonal vector. So I can remove this sum symbol into, uh, into before this one. Okay. So this is, this is a term only related with the index i. Okay. So in that way, in this, we will do another approximate to give you another inequation. So inequation is that so here it is 
smaller than one because this is K, okay? So for the entire orthogonal space, like I say, from X1 to Xn, so this term will become one. So well, the only way that they are equation is that all the other things like the phi j t and x uh, k, okay, x k min uh, plus one and x k plus two, x k plus three, all of these things will be zero, okay, only in that way. So we can have this equation variable. So in that way, I will find the final solution. The final solution is that, so it is a multiplication of the the lambda two to the k uh, plus one, all of these eigenvectors. So all of these eigenvectors will naturally correspond to the eigenvalue that we want. So in that way, we know that in this graph coloring problem, okay, so what I mean the graph coloring problem is like what I show here. So this is a graph coloring. So I will use the eigenvector two and eigenvector three. So this is natural, the solution for us. So this eigenvector for each node will be the, it will minimize, okay? It will help you to understand the smoothness, the less smoothness and give under this kind of very uh, meaningful constraint to give you a visualization of how this uh, graph look like and the clustering on this kind of graph. Okay, so that's all for today's lecture. So uh, thank you for coming here. So <laughs> I think the next time I will have a smaller class, maybe I will separate it to the two weeks to record this kind of video. So it's somehow a little tired for me to do this, this kind of thing. So next time I will remind and keep it in mind, I provide two more things in this lecture. And also this is the first time I have introduced some, some kind of this is mathematic in the English. So mm, my English not pretty well, but I will practice and towards a good way. So if you have any suggestion, please, please let me know. Okay, so that's very important. And for the, another thing that's uh, I want to say thanks to the uh, Zhi Ping Xiao. That's this. Uh, this slide is from the help help, help from her. Okay. So, uh, that's the end of this lecture. Thanks for joining this class.